a crash course in basic knowledge of how to dig. First, wherever you're going, be prepared to walk. Uphill, downhill, across flat ground, you're going to be walking in the early morning or in the mid afternoon. Second, you're the one doing the work, so you're the one taking the tools up the hill over to the site. If you're starting a new site, expect bare land with all the plant life intact. But wait, before you do anything, make sure you have gloves and water. No matter where you are, you're doing hard labor, so you'll need to drink two to three times the amount of water you should normally drink. You'll also need to put sunscreen on, no matter where you are. Next, if the tarp or cover isn't up, you've got to put it up so that you and the other people at the site have more protection from the sun. Not just for your skin, but for your eyes as well. You'll need several people for this job and you'll need to make sure everything is secure and safe for work conditions. Next, you'll need to work out where the squares are. If you're a volunteer, this isn't really your responsibility, but you should pay attention to where each square is in relation to yours. After the twine or rope has been set for the borders of the square, you'll need to make and place sandbags along the outside of the twine. Remember the sandbags are made from materials gathered from the site. After you pickaxe the dirt to loosen it up and use the terea or a large hoe to scoop it up into a black bucket. Not a colored bucket, we'll come back to those. Any soil that isn't used for sandbags can be taken to the dump site either by carrying two buckets or filling a wheelbarrow and taking that down. Be sure that you're comfortable enough with the weight of the buckets or the wheelbarrow before heading to the dump site. Trips to the dump site will be frequent and continue throughout the dig. Another important aspect that lasts through the entire dig is taking heights. You use a special tool to find the height on a measuring stick. This is something that can be easier said than done, but once you get the hang of it, it becomes quite easy. As the square gets deeper, you'll have a wall or walls between each of the squares. This is called the bulk. In order for the bulk to stay intact and keep everyone safe from collapse, you'll need to keep it straight by using a full-size pickaxe or a small pickaxe for more precise movements. You could also use a small pickaxe for going around rocks if the large pickaxe cannot fit or may damage precious materials. Since the spot you may be working in can be tight and the terea may not be able to pick up the dirt you've accumulated, using a trowel and dustpan to pick it up will be necessary. And in some cases, a hard bristled brush would also do. Not to be mistaken with the soft bristled brush, which is for cleaning the square up. If you're working close to what may be a floor, you'll want to sift the dirt collected using either a one-man sifter or a two-man sifter. Be sure to take out any large rocks before sifting as to not damage the sifter. Be sure to stand downwind away from the site so that the dust doesn't go back into the squares and be vigilant for any small pieces of bone, shell, beads, or seeds. Since a square can be quite deep and may become difficult to get into, you may want to fashion a makeshift staircase out of sandbags or use a ladder. However, sometimes the ladder can be used for other purposes, such as taking large rocks out of the square if pure manpower doesn't work. But if neither of those methods works and a rock is too large to move, you can always break it down into rubble. Just make sure to clean up after yourself. Coming back to the colored bucket. These buckets are for holding pottery and bone bags of the separate loci of each square. One square can have multiple loci, but it may only have one locus at a time. In order to attach the bucket or bone bag to a certain locus, you'll need an ID. For the bone bag, it's written directly on the bag. Make sure to use only pen and not permanent marker, as it can seep through the bag and onto the bone. For the bucket, it is written on a tag that is then tied to the bucket. What is written on the tag is the same information as on the bone bag. These colored buckets are collected at the end of each day. Then they are taken to wherever the pottery wash happens. And until the pottery wash begins, they soak in water. Once pottery wash begins, each person participating takes a bucket, a brush, and a basket to put the clean pottery into. 
Be sure not to scrub too hard because there may be paint or an inscription on the piece. After all the pieces in your bucket are clean, you'll then need to count them. Write the number on the tag attached to the bucket and then tie the tag onto the basket. And after this, set the basket in a safe location to dry for the pottery read. As for the bones, they are washed separately by people who are trained specifically to wash them. At Pottery Read, they will look at the baskets and separate out any diagnostic pieces, such as handles, rims, or bases. They will then decide what to keep and what to throw away. After they decide what to keep, it is put into a bag with its tag info and later labeled by its dig permit, locus number, and basket number which is written on the piece itself in archival ink as to not hurt the pottery. Back at the site, there will be a notebook, keeping track of all the loci which someone inputs into a computer-based data system at the end of each day. It lists the basket, locus, square, date, name of the supervisor, and a description of the locus. Also at the site will be the square leader's notebooks, which include top draws of their squares from each day sometimes multiple times a day if it changes enough. At the end of the dig, you may tear down bulks between squares. Make sure to pull the dirt into the square that isn't being worked on, if there is one, and you have a bucket ready to catch most of the dirt as it falls and a tarp to catch the rest of it. Also, at the end of the dig, you'll want to take the tarp down and fold it up so it can go back into storage. In addition to that, you'll want to put a fence up around the site, warning people of the falling hazard. While this may not be everything that you need to know about how to dig, this is a good starting point and I hope it helps.